Hello and welcome to another NGen Math 8 lesson by eMath Instruction. My name is Kirk Weiler and today we're going to be doing Unit 6, Lesson 6 on Nonlinear Functions. So, no great surprise, the last two lessons we've spent looking at linear functions. Functions that are modeled by equations of lines. And when we plot input-output pairs, they all fall along a line, they have a constant rate of change, etc., etc., right? But, of course, there's lots of functions in the real world that are extremely important that aren't linear, and we just give them the broad category of non-linear functions, all right? So, let's jump in and kind of get into this. Now, when outputs of a function change at a constant rate, that the function is linear, and it can be graphed using a line. But sometimes, the rate of change isn't a constant. And when this happens, when that slope changes, when that rate of change changes, well, then we get these nonlinear functions. And let's look at perhaps the most famous nonlinear function in exercise number one. Let me, let me bring it up to the top of the, top of the screen. Here we go. The equation y equals x squared defines y as a function of x. Answer the following questions based on this function. Letter A. Fill in the table of values below to create xy pairs for the function. All right, so I just want, I want to graph this thing. I want to see what it looks like. And of course, if all the points that I graph end up lying in a straight line, then I lied to you that this isn't, you know, a nonlinear function. Now, creating, you know, points from this function rule are pretty easy, right? Because all I'm going to do is I'm going to take my input, negative 3, I'm going to square it. Now keep in mind that negative 3 times negative 3, a negative times a negative is a positive. So I'm going to get the point negative 3 comma 9. Now again, make sure you get that, right? Don't plug negative 3 squared into your calculator. You don't need to do that. It's just negative 3 times negative 3 gives me a positive 9. So I get the point negative 3, 9, which I'll eventually plot, all right? What I'd like you to do now is pause the video and fill in the rest of this table. Do so now. All right, well, let's go through it pretty quickly. Let's see, in this case, we'll get y equals negative 2 squared. Negative 2 times negative 2 is positive 4. So I get negative 2 comma 4. If I put negative 1 in there and square it, negative 1 times negative 1 is positive 1. So I get the point negative 1, 1. If I put 0 in there, 0 squared, 0 times 0 is 0. So I get the nice point 0, 0. Bring this up a bit. If I put 1 in there, 1 squared, 1 times 1 is 1. So I get the point 1, comma 1. If I put 2 in there, 2 squared is going to be 4. So 2, comma 4. And finally, if I put 3 in there, and square it, I get 9, and I get the point 3, comma 9. All right, simple enough. And of course, this leads us understandably to letter B, which says, graph the data on the grid provided. All right, so that's pretty easy. Let's do this together. And right? I'm going to plot the point negative 3, 9. That's going to be right here. I'm going to plot the point negative 2, 4, the point negative 1, 1, 0, 0, 1, 1, Come on, there we go. 2, 4, and 3, 9. And right away, you can see, even as I connect it, right, that this is not falling in a straight line, right? In fact, it's falling in what we would call a curve. We don't really tend to call it a curved line, then it gets confused with a straight line. Lines are straight, everything else is a curve, so to speak. Now, is this function linear? Well, the answer is obviously no. And how can you tell? Because the, the points don't fall on a straight line, right? It really is that basic. Now, maybe there's a little bit more to it. Maybe we could get into why they don't fall on straight lines. And we're going to look at some, th some things along those aspects later. But at the end of the day, right, the answer is no. And the reason why is because the points don't lie on a straight line. Simple as that. 
Again, why they don't lie, lie in a straight line, that's a different matter. But I can tell this is not a linear function because if I took out a ruler, I, there's no way a ruler would pass through all of these points at once. In fact, even if I excluded these points, even if I just took 0, 0, 1, 1, 2, 4, and 3, 9, even if I did that, they still wouldn't fall in a straight line. All right, you can tell that this thing is actually kind of curving. And in fact, when we draw it, we should draw a nice smooth curve through the points. All right, it's as simple as that. Now, it's kind of cool because that means spotting, right? Spotting linear versus nonlinear functions isn't all that hard. In fact, let's take a look at that in exercise number two. For the functions below, classify each as linear or nonlinear based on the graph. All right, I'm betting this is going to be pretty easy for you. Why don't you pause the video now and classify each one of these graphs of a function as either a nonlinear function or a function. All right, so here we go. Definitely a straight line. <laughs> All right, so since this is a straight line, this is a linear function. Definitely not a straight line. So this is nonlinear. Also definitely not a straight line. So this is nonlinear. And then a straight line again. So linear. Eventually, when you get to Algebra 1, you'll start to talk about, you know, what kind of function this is. This is what's called a quadratic or parabolic function. What kind of function this is. This is what's called an exponential function. But for right now, all we want to do is be able to recognize using graphs when we have a linear function, i.e. functions that have the graphs of straight lines, and nonlinear functions, i.e. graphs that don't have straight lines. Pretty much boils down to that. All right. Now, Let's look at another really important piece, though, of linear functions. So linear and nonlinear um, have interesting properties when they're examined in table form, okay? So we just looked at them in graph form, and that's awesome. But sometimes you'll get functions that are represented in table form. So I'd like to take a look at how you can recognize when a function is linear versus nonlinear in a table form, and let's look at it in exercise number three. The linear function y equals 3x plus 2 and the nonlinear function y equals x squared are shown in the table below. Letter A. Fill in the values of the function for the given input values, then calculate the change in y that occurs from one input to the next. All right, so let me explain what I'm getting at here. Let's fill in some values for the linear function. All right, so when x is equal to 0, right? There's not a lot of room here. y is going to be 3 times 0 plus 2, which is 2. When x is equal to 1, y is going to be 3 times 1 plus 2. That's going to be 5. When x is 3, that's going to be, or sorry, when x is 2, that's going to be y equals 3 times 2 plus 2. That's 6 plus 2, or 8, etc. I don't, I'm not going to keep going because I'd like you to fill in a bunch of this. Now, what do I mean by the change in y? Well, the first thing I'd like you to do is just kind of put an x through these two. I probably should have had that done already for you. What I mean is how much does y change when we go from this y to this y? Okay. Now, keep in mind that if we're increasing, the change in y is positive, and if we're decreasing, the change in y is negative. In this particular case, we're increasing. We're going from 2 to 5, so the change in y is 5 minus 2, or 3 units. Now the change in y, the next change in y will be 8 minus 5, which is also 3 units. What I'd like you to do is I'd like you to finish filling out this, calculate all the other changes in y, then come over here, fill out what y is equal to when y is x squared for all of these x values, then calculate their changes in y. You already did this kind of portion on the front side of the sheet, so it should be pretty quick. All right, and then we'll talk about the results. Pause the video now. This will take a little while because you have to do some calculation work here. All right, let's take a look. Still staying with our linear function. When x is equal to 3, my y value, 3 times 3 is 9, plus 2 is 11. And 11 minus 8 is equal to 3. For x equals 4, we'll have 3 times 4 plus 2. 
That's 12 plus 2, which is 14. And 14 minus 11 is 3. And then 3 times 5, which is 15, plus 2 is 17. 17 minus 14 is 3. Hmm, I'm starting to think I see something about the linear function. But now let's go with the nonlinear function. So here, when x is equal to 0, y is equal to 0 squared, which is 0. No change in y yet. I need two values of y to be able to do that. Uh, when x is 1, y is also 1. Here I can calculate a change in y. 1 minus 0 is 1. All right, now when x is equal to 2, y is equal to 4. 4 minus 1 is 3. When x is equal to 3, x squared is equal to 9. 9 minus 4 is 5. When x is equal to 4, y is equal to 16. 16 minus 9 is 7. And when x is equal to 5, right, y is equal to 25. 25 minus 16 is 9. All right. So we filled in the table, and really what's important are these changes in y. Now, by the way, notice that the change in x is always one unit. It's not so important that the change in x is one unit. What's important is that the change in x is constant. So we're always one unit, one unit, one unit, one unit, and one unit. So we can say for every one unit that x got larger, y got larger by three units. Three units. Three units or one unit, three units, five units, seven units, nine units. So now, the most important piece of this exercise, letter B. What is true about the change in y for the linear function that is not true for the change in y for the nonlinear function? Well, what is true about the change for the linear function that isn't true for the nonlinear? Pause the, the video now. Well, as confusing as this might sound, the change in y for the linear function doesn't change. It's constant. All right? So the change in y for the linear function is constant. Constant meaning not changing. Let me make that look like an S, is constant while the change in Y for nonlinear isn't constant. And that's kind of what it boils down to, right? As long as the change in x is constant, then a linear function will have a constant change in y. But nonlinear functions, that change in y will actually change. It'll alter. It won't be constant. And that is really truly what makes a linear function linear. Now, side note, of course, if you divide the change in y by the change in x, you get the average rate of change, which in our case, since the change in x is always equal to 1, so we always have 3 divided by 1. Not surprisingly, we get the slope of our line, which is 3. On the other hand, this nonlinear function, y equals x squared, we can't talk about the slope of y equals x squared because, quite frankly, the slope keeps changing. It actually keeps getting larger, right? A slope of 1, a slope of 3, a slope of 5, slope of 7, slope of 9. Now, technically, those aren't slopes. They're changes in y. But because the change in x is equal to 1, then the change in y divided by the change in x would just be equal to the change in y. Anyhow, let's test this out in the last exercise. Exercise number four. Which of the tables below could represent a linear function? All right. Now, what I would like to point out about each one of these tables, and this is critical, is that the change in x remains the same. So here, the change in x is one unit, right? Three going to four is one unit. Four going to five is one unit. Here, that x is changing by two units each time, but that's okay as long as the change in x is constant. Here, the change in x is by three units each time. Here, the change in x is by five units each time. All right? That's critical that the change in x remains the same. Now, what you want to do is look at all the changes in y. So, pause the video now and see which one of these tables could be a linear function.
All right, well, let's take a look at the changes and why. For the first table, for when I go from 5 to 7, I add 2. When I go from 7 to 11, I add 4. When I go from 11 to 17, I add 6. And when I go from 17 to 25, I add 8. Right? Because those changes in y are not constant, this cannot be linear. Now, I know I'm only looking for the one that is linear, all right? But that definitely has to be non-linear. Quite frankly, as soon as I saw 2 and 4, I could have stopped. They've got to all be the same for it to be linear. Let's take a look at number 2. Now, in this case, actually, the change in y is negative 2, right? We're subtracting 2 each time. Well, at least there. But then I go back to adding 2. Now, again, had this been minus 2, minus 2, minus 2, minus 2, this would have been our winner. Okay? But the fact that it's minus 2, minus 2, and then plus 2, plus 2, again, nonlinear. All right, let's take a look at table three. What's going on here? Well, here I'm going to add two. Here I add two. Here I add two. And here I add two. So this one could be linear. Now, by the way, the reason that I can't say it is linear is because this is not necessarily the entire function. Right? I mean, maybe there's more data values down here, and maybe eventually I wouldn't have this constant change of plus 2 each time. Let's do the last one just to verify that it is nonlinear. In this case, what happens is that I subtract 2, then I subtract 3. That's enough to tell us it's nonlinear. Here I would have to subtract 4, and here I would have to subtract 5. So our winner is number three. All right, so let's wrap this up and talk about what we saw today. Right, today we introduced the idea of a nonlinear function, right? And we already knew what functions were. You know, you give a value of x, there's only one value of y that comes out. But all of the functions we've really kind of concentrated on so far have been linear functions, ones that when you plot them, all the points fall in a straight line. The great thing about nonlinear functions is that if we're given a graph, they're pretty easy to spot. If the xy pairs don't fall on a straight line, it's a nonlinear function. We also looked, though, and this was very important in the second half of the lesson, we looked at how to spot nonlinear versus linear functions using tables. And as long as the x values are at a constant interval, right, so the change in x is the same in the table each time, then all we have to do is look at the change in y. If the change in y is constant, then the function is likely linear. And if the change in y is not constant, then the function is definitely nonlinear. All right. Well, we'll be looking a little bit more at linear functions, particularly in the next few lessons. And then you're going to see tons of nonlinear functions as you move into Algebra 1 in the following course. For now, I just want to thank you for joining me for another NGen Math 8 lesson by eMath Instruction. My name is Kirk Weiler. And until next time, keep thinking and keep solving problems. Thank you.